So this is a tilt shift lens. You may have heard of them. This one is Canon's EF mount 135mm tilt shift, a long ass macro lens that I'm gonna kind of review. But wait, this lens is discontinued. Why would I bother to review a lens that is discontinued? You see, since this channel is not really about selling you gear, it's more about learning about what these tools do. I figure we can talk about what tilt shift lenses are and how we can use them technically and creatively. So in short, I'll be talking about a concept called Scheinflug. Scheinflug. The Scheinflug principle is named after the man Theodore Scheinflug. However, he himself had discredited having invented the principle and that another dude, Jules Carpentier, invented it. Nevertheless, in short, Scheinflug, for technical purposes, means that you are stretching and warping the bounds of the focal plane in order to render other areas of the image in focus. See, creatively, we can warp and stretch the image the opposite way in order to throw things further out of focus as well. So how does all this work? Normally, you are looking straight through a lens in a precise linear fashion, and the plane of focus is parallel to your image sensor. But sometimes the composition requires us to tweak the light that's coming into our lens in order to accomplish a certain task. So maybe that task is you are looking at a plane of focus that is oblique to the sensor. In this example, you can see that I'm not straight onto the guitar, and I'm trying to capture an inlay on the guitar bridge that is very small. But as the lens gets longer and the distance between the subject and camera gets closer and more macro, your depth of field gets much more shallow. Even at f11, I cannot get the dove's wings sharp edge to edge at this oblique angle without Scheinflug. Scheinflug! So, Scheinflug to the rescue. The Scheinflug principle states that for the image plane to remain in focus on an object, the plane of focus must be parallel to the image plane. However, if your plane of focus is at an angle, you can tilt or swing the lens at an angle, trying to match it, right, so that it intersects the plane of focus at a specific point. Thus, the plane of focus will become more wedge-shaped, allowing you to pull in a further point into focus. So how can this even be? You see, it's because the image circle is larger. Most standard lenses have an image circle that is fixed and only as large as the sensor it is covering. But on a tilt-shift lens, it projects an image that is larger than the sensor, which gives us the necessary room to tweak the image circle around over the sensor as we need. In my guitar example, the dove wing on the right is further away from camera, thus I focus on the closer wing, the further wing is out of focus, but then I swing the lens towards that further wing, which brings it into focus, coupling this with a judicious use of smaller f-stops, and I can get the whole dove rendering sharp through the use of Scheinflug. Scheinflug! So that's an example of swinging on the horizontal plane. Can you use this on a vertical plane? Sure thing. So what's sweet about these lenses is that there's a little button along the side of the lens and you depress it, you can spin the lens around, which converts your swing on the horizontal axis to tilting on the vertical axis. So if I do a shot in the portrait orientation, such as this one, all of a sudden I have the ability to swing my focus further into the shot. For example, Maybe we're doing a beverage shot like this and we're focusing in on the foreground and we're doing some splash shots here and we notice that the Hero product itself is a little bit out of focus. It's kind of starting to fall out. Even at F11, it's starting to fall out of focus here where it says Tequila Blanco. And you can see that this glass in the back is definitely fully out of focus. So if the challenge and the task were to get this glass back here sharp along with the bottle, along with the foreground glassware, this is where tilting the front focal plane into the shot more with a tilt shift lens would come into play. So you can see if I zoom in here and I go to the next shot, you can see tilting forward with the lens, I'm able to bring that rear glass into sharp focus. I can get the label of the bottle into sharp focus, and I still have my foreground glassware in sharp focus. And really from there, it'd just be a matter of doing some post-production on the images. Take those images into a program like Photoshop and layer mask them together. So I'd probably just take, in this case, the section of the image that I'm interested in right there, and bring it over, and I would align it. In this case, I can use the difference mode to generally line up the edge of the 
glassware, approximately about where things were. So you can see an image like this in the end, you know, we would apply a crop. And that's an example of using Chimeflug on the vertical axis. So are these lenses useful in other ways? Absolutely. They are the primary lens of architectural photographers, typically in a wider format like a 24, maybe a 17 millimeter. Why? Well, when you look at a building, in order to get all of the building facade, whether it's interior or exterior, in the frame, you typically have to look kind of up at the structure, okay? But then the top of the building is further away from you and those lines converge going off into vanishing point, and they create what's called keystoning, which is not a desirable look in a professional architectural image. So a photographer within that specialty will employ a tilt shift lens, such as this 24 millimeter. I mean, sure, we can use like Photoshop or Capture One Pro to tweak the lines, but the truth is if you only use that software, you are stretching the pixels. And if you rely only on that, at some point you'll probably get burned and things will start to look warpy and you can't really go back. It's going to be much higher fidelity for you to get most of this right in camera with a tilt shift lens, and then whatever tweaks you do make in post are minor ones rather than the big moves. In this instance, we want to keep the image plane exactly parallel to the facade of the building. And of course, we are cutting off the top of the image area, but then we can utilize the rise and fall action of this lens, essentially looking diagonally through the lens upward to render the building on the image sensor, sensor as standing upright. It's pretty cool. And finally, there's the use of these lenses in creative ways. You know, just because this lens is most often used in a technical manner doesn't mean that's the only way to use them. You know, you can definitely throw the swings and tilt of the lens in the opposite direction to either create a miniaturized looking scene or to gain even less depth of field. For example, I took the 135 and I put it on my Canon 5D SR and I walked down the street and got some shots of these river surfers here in my town. This time of year, the river is charging over this wave and the wave is formed really nice and there's a bunch of surfers and kayakers that hit it, it's pretty cool. This time, kind of like with the guitar image, I was doing a swing, but with the guitar image, I was doing a swing technically to try to bring a further point of an oblique angle on that plane of focus further into focus. In this case, I'm throwing that swing in the opposite direction or just kind of wildly and looking and seeing where that out of focus area lands. And you can see this is like almost the maximum amount of swing on this particular lens. And you can see kind of what it does here. You know, we've got this guy and he's, you know, generally sharp here and catching the wave and the board is pretty sharp. And as we come further forward, you can see that, you know, the focus line is coming all the way from the foreground through him and all the way through the back. It's like a sliver of sharp going through versus everything to the left and to the right of that is out of focus. So that's an example of how you can use these lenses in you know creative ways to just kind of deliberately throw things out of focus and, and how you can get the viewer to look exactly where in the image because that's the part of the image that's actually sharp. I used Canon's recent 90 millimeter tilt shift and had a great time achieving less depth of field for a product shot. I mean, these lenses have been for a long time among Canon's sharpest lenses. I mean, in this image, you can see the CMYK halftone dots on the label when you zoom in. I mean, it's extra sharp. These concepts all come down from the perspective control camera, also known as the view camera, wherein these devices have a front standard where the lens is attached, as well as a rear standard where the film plane or say a digital sensor could be attached. And you have all the movements available on both the lens and film planes, rise, fall, tilt, shift, swing, Technical cameras also come in medium format options like the Linhoff 679 with a digital back, let's say, or more recently the Cambo Actis series where you can use a DSLR or a mirrorless camera and a medium format lens with its larger image circle to achieve these movements. This is used in both architectural as well as food and product photography applications. Uh, I would say in those scenarios, a really sturdy tripod or a studio mono stand would really be a must for that type of work. But on the tilt shift lenses, you can't employ all of the movements at the same time. Your rear standard's fixed with the camera, the image sensor. It makes them a little more limited than a view camera, but still useful, still sharp as attack, 
gives you technical and creative advantages over other lenses. And you can even use this sort of lens, say, for landscape work. When it's employed with tilt, tilting forward, as well as hyperfocal focusing, you can achieve having more of the foreground in focus off to infinity. Will this be noticed by anyone but you? Probably not. But it's still a fun use of a technical lens. These are not autofocus lenses. They are heavy. They have a really nice build. And they're really not average everyday lenses like a 2470. They are pretty hyper-specialized. So, like, why would I give an overview of lenses that are discontinued? The 50 and the 90 are listed as temporarily out of stock on B&H, and the 135 is not listed at all. Rumor has it Canon is going to be releasing their RF mount tilt shift lenses, so that will be something for the RF users to consider as they develop those lenses. In years from now, who knows what it will be, but the Scheinflug principle is still an important one for technical and creative concerns, because they can achieve things that a normal lens cannot. Will that even be noticed? Is it worth the two grand per lens? Some of that is really a matter of whether you are really needing other people to notice, or if, say, you have a client that says, can we get that corner of the image in focus? And with Scheinflug, you probably can, but without a tilt shift lens, yeah, you, you might not be able to, right? You might be able, in, unless you get into focus stacking, which works pretty good but will possibly slow things down on set or add a lot more post-production to your plate, right? So it's kind of this, like, do you get it in camera with the lens or do you do focus stacking and have more post? The other aspect has to do with process. You know, the process of working with cameras is part of the joy of photography. And I can say, hands down, that my favorite camera processually to work with is the view camera. It's fun, you have total control over the image, you got perspective plane and focal plane, and I'd say a part of that is like what this camera or lens can do for my imagery, that's one question, as well as what can this camera or lens do for the enjoyment process of capturing an image. In photography, I like to achieve things, and these lenses help me achieve things that no other lens can, and that's why they're worth a lot of money. So consider renting one, or picking one up used, or maybe you could wait for the RF version if you're on the RF mount, if you have a camera system that does not support tilt shift lenses, I'm sorry for you. Sad trombone. <laughs> have you used a tilt shift lens? What was your experience? Did you like it? Did you not like it? I think they're amazing lenses. I'm super bummed that, you know, they're out of stock and 135's discontinued, and it's like, ah, oh, man, you know, like, these are such beautiful tools. Why can't we have them? But Obviously, we're onto the RF mount now, and so I think that's what's happening is they're, they're moving on too. And so I guess I'm gonna have to switch systems soon. <sighs> if you like this video, please consider hitting the like. Subscribe to my channel if you wanna hear more about photo, video, audio related, working on set, different tools that we work with, what they do, how they work, what that's like. Shine Thank you for watching. See you again soon.